Why did you move to Eureka? I moved to Eureka because I wanted to move away from the city, San Francisco, where I was living. And I wanted to live in a rural community. And, um, and Forrest had school up here. So we decided to move to Eureka and, um, until she finished school. We decided to move to Eureka until she finished school. How long have you lived in Eureka? I've lived in Eureka for six years now. <sighs> six years. And what has your experience been like living in Eureka? <laughs> My experience in Eureka has been not so great. Uh, I found the vast majority of people to be backwoods in their thinking, in their behaviors. Um, I'm very reserved with my, the way that I express myself and <clears throat> Um, the folks here are mm, careless about how they interact with others. And uh, I, I, I became very seriously ill here in, uh, in Eureka. And my world went from Riding around on my motorcycle, hanging out, working, and I worked at taking surveys at, at bars. So, um, you know, I, I had uh, uh, a group of people that that I hung out with once in a while, and and in Eureka, my world has shrank, and I have three friends. Uh, one of which I'm not talking to right now. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I ever will. <laughs> but um, overall, if I had to do it over again, the only reason I would do it is because Forrest was able to go to school. That's, that's the only reason why I've stayed here as long as I have. and. Yeah, my experience with Eureka has not been the greatest, and it's probably me, which doesn't matter, because that just means that I need to move, or I need to change things. Um, I'm hearing, like, um, music in the background from, I guess, next door or something. It's like the Mexican, you know, mm. and... Um, it's gone now. It keeps coming and going, and I don't know that this is the best light for you. You look really like sleep, sleep deprived in the camera, but normal when I look at you. Just FYI, I don't know if that makes a difference to you. Do you want to move away from Eureka? I want to move away from Eureka so bad, so bad. I'm already moved away. I'm already gone. Why is that? I want to move forward with my life, and I'm not able to do that in this environment. Um, getting around isn't so easy. There's nowhere to get around to. Uh, there's no transit system to speak of. Yeah, my world is very small here. Yeah, I need a larger world. I need something different. Is anything holding you here? I'm getting really dizzy. Um, the only thing that I can think of that is holding me here is the lack of motivation that I have to pack up my stuff.
What places have you considered moving to? Do not. I, I've considered moving um, to a number of different places. One of them, I think, was Boston. Um, one of them was uh, Southern California. Uh, I think I looked in the Midwest somewhere. What I did was I went on Craigslist and I went to the Rants and Raves, which is pretty much the bottom of the barrel for uh, um, for people. People just go on there and they spew the worst that they can spew. And and uh, and what I found um, in in every place except for Portland, Oregon, all of the rants were like nigger this, bitch that, you know, it, it was racist and, and deplorable and, and just hate. And, uh, and when I went on the Portland's rants and raves, I heard, why did they park in that particular place? They shouldn't be parking there. There's a no parking sign. Gosh darn it. <laughs> And I, know, I, I'm, I certainly don't have any delusions about Portland, but I, I do appreciate the um, progressiveness, the um, how people think more. Probably because I'm from there, but I, I just I think more like a Portlander. What do you think you will do if you get to Portland and it's not all you thought it was cracked up to be? If I get to Portland and it's not all that it's cracked up to be, I'm... It will be a major blow. It'll be a blow. Um, the question then is, wh wh where is? And um, I mean, there's a number of things that could go wrong in Portland. There's just there. I have a, I have a history there. I have a past. I was involved with seedy and shady people, and they. Um, still are around, you know, probably doing some seedy and shady things, and uh, that's why I left, and that's that's why I've been gone for over 20 years. And um, if, if Portland isn't um, the place for us, then we'll go somewhere else and see if that's the place for us. How did you meet Forrest? I met Forrest at some coffee shop <laughs> she was working at. Uh, and I, I got spellbound. And um, have been ever since. Tell me some things that make Forrest special. Um, Forrest uh, has a strength that uh, I find very compelling. She has uh, a power that uh, I don't fully understand. Uh, she's funny. She likes me. Uh, she, she knows how to um, make me feel good about myself. And um, it's genuine. 
And I hope I do the same for her. And yeah, Forrest is uh, my hero in a lot of ways. And I'd love to strangle her in other ways. And uh, I don't know. I can't say enough about her. She's smart. And I don't mean smart like everybody says, oh yeah, they're smart. Well, she's this. She's really smart. She's a highly intelligent woman. And uh, has been able to argue me under the table once or twice. Once or twice. And, um, she also has a vulnerability that she doesn't think that other people can see. And, um, she tries very hard to hide it. And, uh, but it's there, it's there, it's, I can see it as plain as day. What are the serious challenges Forrest faces in life? <clears throat> I think the most serious challenge, one of the most, say the top three. One, one of the major challenges that forests face forest one of the major challenges that forest faces one of the major challenges that forest faces is her pride she has to make sure that she hasn't uh, been misinterpreted or misunderstood everything has to be in place right now and I think that's a very positive attribute. And I think it can get in your way sometimes. Um, so another serious challenge that I think Forrest faces is um, she's not really sure what she wants to do. Um, career wise and um, I think she thought she would have it figured out by the end of school and there her, her, her degree is, uh, is such that the field is very small and so opportunity also is very small there's a lot of um, people graduating with with uh, microbiology degrees or uh, cell and molecular biology degrees and in the type and, and there just isn't a whole lot of funding out there for jobs so I think I think that that's probably the third challenge is is just uh, the availability of work And what are some of the things you think makes Thomas special? The things about me that are special. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think about how my actions affect those around me. And I, I think I do that a little more than most folks. Um, I, I'm not saying that I haven't hurt people in my life, but I... I have a better understanding as to why that's n not okay now. Um, 
And I think I I think that that makes me kind of a little different. What I observe is that people people don't really care about each other so much, and that uh, oftentimes altruism is self motivating. Um, or uh, people who are do altruistic things do do them for selfish reasons. I I I think that um, how I view myself has changed over the past five ten years. Significantly, I'm a middle-aged man now, and I'm severely limited, and a lot of my boy's dreams are gone, but I have this I have this hope that I just can't shake. I've, shake I, I've been without it a few times in my life and that those have not ended up well. But I have this feeling or hope that people can stop hurting each other. I don't mean, you know, in, in, in Kazakhstan. I, I mean, at online behind the wheel of a car when you when you feel like you're alone but you're not really you're interacting with other people in those moments I, I, I when when you start seeing people treat each other really nicely in those moments that's when that's when you know that we're healing as a society and uh, I, I have a hope that that is possible and I think probably more than anything else, that has got me through my entire life. Through all the stuff I've been through is that silly little hope. What are some of the serious challenges you face? Uh, the challenges I, I face a, a lot of different battles on a lot of diff a lot of fronts. Um, emotionally, uh, I am affected by uh, my health, uh, the few relationships that I have. Um, you know, I'm I'm emotionally affected by the by the, my environment. Physically, I I have uh, my memory is poor. Um, I have different things that are going on all at different times. So maybe one minute I'll be dizzy and the next minute I'll, I'll be puking and, you know, uh, and later on I'll have horrible diarrhea. Uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, maybe I'll pass out and, you know, I mean, I have, I have all these things, different things that are going on. So it's like I feel constantly as, as though I'm, I'm, I'm complaining to, you know, uh, about, you know, the stuff. And uh, sometimes it just it gets unbearable and uh, other times, I'm, I, you know, I'm able to, to get through it. And, and some of the times I have, I have good days and, uh, so my, I have a lot of challenges, and go and especially going back to Portland, uh, I have the the challenges I have, or um, probably one of the, the biggest is will be my sister, um, who's still kind of getting into trouble, and which means I can't really have anything to do with her. But um, 
but I feel this like I owe something to her. But I, I also know that I can't give it anything to her while she's using. I, I can't feel that debt while she's using. Um, and I'm scared to death of my kitten. It, it just it frightens me. It, it my cat is, is 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 a frightening frightening beast. And uh, and she she'll attack. And I'm scared to death of her. Really, really. Talk about the abuse you've lived through. Oh. Um. I have lived through a lot of abuse as a child. Uh, I was beaten, raped, I was a child uh, prostitute. Um, people, you know, I was 12 years old and people, men would pick me up and they would touch me and uh, and give me 20 bucks and let me back onto the streets. And um, I, I have been in 18 different group homes and 26 different foster homes. Um, most people in authority um, who had any opportunity to uh, would abuse me in one way or another. So, and I, I was a ward of, of the court at a very young age as well. And so, meaning my, my mother moved away and abandoned me. Uh, this wasn't, th this was just a way of life for me. This wasn't, it wasn't uh, isolated events. These were, I would, I was in a situation where I was surrounded by men and who wanted to molest young boys and I was a young boy and uh, it was like they were drawn to me. <laughs> oh, I remember one time I, I was in a in a um, in a Greyhound station, and, and this guy came up and he told me that he wanted to show me his rabbits. He had some candy for me. I forget what he said, but he started walking me out of the train station, and, and my aunt yelled to my mom, and my mom grabbed my arm, and he started pulling, and uh, you know, I was in the middle of the struggle between this kid would be kidnapper and my mom and finally you know a, a guard came and chased the guy away but um, they would find me the abusers would find me they, they knew right where to go it was an instinct I think so I had a lot of abuse I could go on but uh, I did not grow up in a great space Is there a darkness associated with Portland? Describe. There is a darkness associated with Portland, I would say. Not so much as, say, 10 years ago. Um... Most of the people that I knew growing up, or a lot of the people that I knew growing up, are in dead, are in jail, or um, still living on the streets. Um, uh, there's a sadness that I have 
for the people who saw me on the streets selling my body and just walked on by. Uh, the families that I that would like scorn me or shun me um, with the with this dirty look as they walked by. And uh, it's a as a 12 year old, those people should have done something. They should have protected me. And um, they didn't. So I, I guess the darkness that, that I would feel, that I feel is, is for um, society as a group and how they treated me and failed to protect me time and time again. And there's a lot of ghosts. A lot of a lot of, a lot of dead people. Do you feel the, that there's a need to reconcile this darkness with the hope you have for finding a home in Portland? I feel there's a need to reconcile this darkness with the hope that I have for people. From what I understand, Portland is also a, a pretty been a pretty quickly changing city over the past 20 years and and so there's a lot that is there that wasn't. Um, I don't think I'm seeking to do that necessarily. I don't need to need to seek to find that reconciliation, but um if there is any reconciling, if there is, uh, if that is even possible, that then it will be with my hope, that hope, that piece of me that has always thought the best of people, and uh, recently has has failed to do that. You know, it's it's gotten less. I don't think the best of people anymore so much, and I really like that about myself. Where do you stand with the idea of moving to Portland? <clears throat> with all this talk about Portland, um, uh, there is a part of me that has has a reservation about moving, um, and it's financial. It's um, we'll be moving to a smaller home. Um, Will there be room? You know, what will it be the right neighborhood? Will you know, will I be able to walk out in the street at night and, um, and not have to defend myself? Um, Tell me about your schooling. No, I'll ask it that. That was for you. Oh, okay. You have some school mm -hmm. Tell me about your mother. Uh, my mother. What? Okay. My mother was, um, schizophrenic. And, one minute she would be giving loving attention and the next minute she would knock you out. So most of my life was spent um, dodging her fists or blocking them with my, my hands, you know. 
there isn't really a lot to tell about her because that's it was so severe that that's pretty much all I can remember. A few things other than that here and there, but um, pretty much all I remember of her is, is her violence. And um, I mean, she was a young mother, schizophrenic, and she did the best that she could. I think the moment that was the most freeing for me was when I realized that I no longer expected her to be my mother. Uh, I was probably in my early 20s when that happened. I just, uh, she, she she's not a mother. And she's just a how poor little human being yeah, with severe psychological problems and um, yeah I, I don't I don't see her as a bad person I just see her as somebody who was very sick and I was very vulnerable and um, I happened to be the one that was there it doesn't ail me anymore, the abuse that she put me through. That that doesn't... That doesn't plague me. Is there anyone in Portland who you do view as family or who you want to reconnect? I, I do have one friend in Portland um, who I have maintained a friendship with over these years, and uh, he he's uh, he's a hell of a guy, and I love him very much, and uh, I appreciate who he is. He has a lot of honor. I have other people in Portland. I, I'll run into them. I'll run into people there, and, and some of them will be able to have a friendship with me, and some of them won't. And um, it's been 20 years, 25 years. So people change. It'll be a new experience. What are your plans for when you get to Portland? Do you have any? When I get to Portland, I am going to take Forrest around to all of the different sites to be seen and all of the wonders of Portland and, and the surrounding area. Uh, I want to take her skiing on Mount Hood, which is a three hour drive from Portland. And uh, there's um, Sovies Island, which is basically beaches on the uh, on the river, and um, Horsetail Falls and Willamette Falls and Wickiup Reservoir, Detroit Lake. You know, uh, don't really have, feel the need to take her uh, to the to the western part of Oregon because we <laughs> lived in San Francisco and we live in Eureka, which is right on the ocean. And so, you know, who wants to see the ocean again? So it's, a, it's only, you know, you can only see it so much. And never understood people who.